This episode is sponsored by Privacy. It's like a burner phone for credit cards. To sign up for free and get $5 credit, go to privacy.com slash GOG. That's $5 free to spend anywhere by just signing up. Privacy.com slash GOG. Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo, discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. 300! Woo-hoo. Yes. You know, I never saw that movie. What? I know. I should probably get on that. You should. It's a good movie. It's, I mean, it's, you know, schlocky, cheesy, but it's, <laughs> it it's delivers a what it promises, movie. right? It yeah. really, it really does. It's, you know, tits and swords. Is Excellent. Kind of it. Yeah. Excellent. And lots of slaughter. Tits, swords, and slaughter. That's what they should have called it. And yet, you don't like Game of Thrones. Ah, they kill all my favorite characters. Well, I guess they do in 300, too. Never mind. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> so, no uh, episode on Monday. Just a little reminder. Yep, we're all taking uh, the Thanksgiving holiday off, including uh, Mr. Dave Bittner. So, we will not uh, have an episode on Monday, but we'll be back following later that week. Yes, we will. And if you're a first-time listener, we break this show up into two episodes a week. Each episode is different. So they're not, it's not the same show on Monday as it is on Thursday. So highly recommend you check out a couple episodes to get the full, full scope of our grumpitude because we yes. have new, new listeners coming in and I wanted to make that clear for everybody. All right. Well, speaking of delivering as promised or actually not, here's some follow up on the uh, big old Amazon HQ2 scam as it's now being known, uh, commondreams.org has a nice write up about this. Uh, new York taxpayers have, uh, Learned that they're going to be forced to finance a helipad for Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world, of course. Nice. Is it made of gold? (laughs) Oh, no, that's Trump's. Never mind. That's Trump's, yeah. So uh, in addition to that, all the details that are coming out now just make it sound worse and worse and worse. Uh, Politico reported on Thursday the site where Amazon will build offices for its new headquarters in Long Island City was previously reserved for nearly 1,500 public housing units for needy families. That's gone. Yeah, those people are being moved to an Amazon warehouse somewhere on yeah, yes. in upstate New York. And that is not all. In addition to killing plans for the public housing development, Amazon's Long Island City headquarters will also reportedly displace over 1,000 New York City public school workers to carve out space for them. Nice. Oh, man. So that's happening as well. Now, while Amazon claimed that it will receive $2.1 billion in total taxpayer incentives... From the two uh, cities, Long Island City and Crystal City combined, a new analysis by Good Jobs First found that the actual cost to taxpayers will likely be $4.6 billion and likely even higher. Whoa! So, yes, uh, so Amazon had released a statement saying that it basically it was going to be $48,000 per employee that they would be getting a tax break from, but the new analysis says it's actually more like $112,000, which is considerably probably more than they'll be paying any of those employees. Yeah, seriously. Nice job, so, Amazon. <laughs> well done, Amazon. Hmm. And we thought Facebook was the only douchey company this week. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Over on Vox, there's a pretty good write-up on the human costs of Black Friday. They get an Amazon warehouse manager to kind of go behind the scenes and tell what it's like for everybody there. And uh, spoiler alert, it sucks. <laughs> it really, really sucks. People like get jazzed at the beginning. They're like, we're bringing Christmas to everybody. And then after they're like, you know, like fourth or fifth week straight of 12 yeah. hour days and, you know, six days a week, pretty much everybody just wants to fall over dead. Right. That's how that works. We've got a bit of follow up on the kilogram. Uh, we did a story a while back when uh, we talked about how the actual kilogram, the gold standard, as it were, wasn't a kilogram anymore because, you know, just little bits of ions are flying off of it and whatnot. And the idea was eventually, well, we should probably change this because the kilogram can't just keep falling in weight because then it's not a kilogram anymore. Right. And representatives from more than 60 countries voted during the 26th meeting of the General Conference on Weights and Measures in Versailles, France. What a party group that must be. I'm telling you, man, that's a barn burner right there. Man, that hotel bar. Whew. if if, if, If drinks could talk. Yeah. Well, hey, at least cocaine comes in kilograms. That's right. So they have finally redefined it. It will not be based on a physical object anymore. It will be based on a, a fundamental factor in physics known as Planck's constant, which is an, a small number which starts with 33 zeros after its decimal point, describing wow. the behavior of elementary packets of light known as photons and everything from the flicker of a candle flame to the twinkle of stars overhead. It is a fundamental constant woven into the fabric of the universe, and it will now be the very definition of the kilogram. 
So we've gone to pure science and not just a physical object anymore, which is kind of cool. That is pretty cool. I like science. But you know who doesn't like science? North Carolina. <laughs> this one's right for you, Brian. Anti-vaccine mm. community behind North Carolina chicken pox outbreak from the BBC. Who could have <sighs> saw this coming? Yeah, yeah. There's a <laughs> oh, school. Oh, wait, of- scientists. <laughs> yeah, everybody with a brain. Uh, there's a school in North Carolina that has the largest religious exceptions for immunization in the state. And uh, now that school has the biggest chicken pox outbreak state officials are aware of since the vaccine became available. Out of the 152 students, 110 have not received the vaccine. Oh, and uh, yeah, so there's a pretty big outbreak. 36 students right now have it. And uh, yeah, calling the herd. Amazing. Just uh, stunning. Stunning. Science mm-hmm. for the win or not. And I love this. This is from the school. We find that our parents are highly motivated to choose exactly what they want for their children. We as a school do not discriminate based on a child's medical history or medical condition. This is a school I would never go to or send my son to or even want to live anywhere near. Yeah, that's about it. And uh, how'd you like my North Carolina accent? It's been I haven't lived there for like 20 years, but I, th- I think I still got it somewhere. I'm sure Trent, a uh, friend of the show, Trent will write with a scathing rebuke. <laughs> He's screaming at his, at the, the speakers in his Porsche right now going, yes, you guys. True. Damn you guys. <laughs> In the news. We have talked about the uh, data breaches an awful lot on the show. In fact, we basically have an entire segment that's just about them for the most part. And uh, we also talk about how companies never never seem to actually have to pay uh, for uh, for their for their ills and their their stupid behavior. And uh, what we've found out and what we've talked about in the past is that it just uh, doesn't uh, make financial sense for them to do so. And uh, that is exactly what the 218 cost of a data breach study from the Ponemon Institute and IBM states. So the average uh, cost per data breach globally at $3.86 million, including IT expenses, insurance, notification, and lost customers and business. In the U.S., the average is $7.91 million. That might sound like a lot. But it's not because of the 477 companies studied had between 1,000 and 100,000 employees with annual revenues from 100 million to more than 25 billion. To these companies, the cost of a breach is a rounding error. The company spends more money buying coffee for its office workers than they do for when they screw up on a data breach. Oh, who'd have thunk it? Yeah. So until we get uh, some regulations and some laws on the books and some hefty penalties, I don't expect anything's going to ever change. Well, we do have some laws, but we just don't have those hefty penalties. Yeah, that's true. We need the hefty penalties, damn it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, something interesting is coming out of facial recognition software. We talk about that a lot in the security segment as well, usually not in a good way. But this is super interesting to me. Uh, there's this guy uh, who launched a Civil War photo sleuth, a web platform dedicated to closing the gap a little bit further between Civil War photos and recognizing who they are. Now, this is interesting. This guy, uh, Ron Coddington is one of the people involved here. And he said he once calculated that there were 40 million photographs of Union soldiers taken during the Civil War. Even if only 10% of those survived, there are still 4 million images out there today. And uh, basically, nobody has been... uh, Very few people are actually... uh, identified in these photos so he wanted to start up this thing to to help do it so you can upload a photograph and then there are all these different kind of tags and then there's some ai that uh, goes through and tries to help out but the interesting thing about this is they found out that because of the photos the quality of the photos the black and white or sepia tones and facial hair that uh, actually human sleuths are much better than digital and software figuring these things out because the beards and mustaches can block the features the program is trying to map. So okay. while they're trying to do this using uh, AI and facial recognition, they're finding out that humans are still better at it. Oh, we need beard removal software. Damn right. That's what we need. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of photos, Instagram. Instagram is finally cracking down on services that sell likes and followers. Now, I know you did an experiment, I believe, with Twitter uh, buying likes and followers. Did you ever do that with Instagram? No, I did not. Because it was such a failure on Twitter that I'm like, I'm not spending any more money on that. Yeah. So the Instagram has built machine learning tools to help detect accounts growing artificially. The move is not retroactive. So if you did it in the past, no punishment for you. You get to nope. keep all those likes and followers. <laughs> Good for you. You spent the money. You might as well keep them. Might as well. That's keep right. Them. And Instagram also in the news again because they accidentally exposed some users' passwords in plain text. Nope. Oh. Oops. <laughs> They rolled out a new feature to download your data because they had to comply with GDPR. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, also because they're trying to do a little, you know, backspin on the Cambridge Analytica stuff because, you know, they're owned by Facebook and they're trying to be the good guys, even right. though all the good guys have left the company now. And Instagram is just part of the mothership. Right. But, yeah, part of this download your data package basically had a pretty a nasty bug in it that let them save copies of your password in plain text. I was not notified of this. I use two-factor auth, so I don't think that I was affected. Did you get a notification from this? I did not. Okay. I well, also use two-factor auth. So. Ah, that, that's <laughs> probably why. There you go. Now, Facebook has obviously been in the news a lot, and uh, over on Recode, Kara Swisher and Scott Galloway have a podcast called Pivot, of course, and they discussed it. And I just like this one particular quote that came from it, so we'll just read this, and then we'll get on to more nasty Facebook news. Winston Churchill said at the outset of World War II, never have so many owed so few to so much, Galloway said on the new podcast, and it got me thinking, can you think of any individuals who have made so much money doing so much damage? I mean, they make tobacco executives look like Mr. Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. Uh, there was an internal Facebook memo because the VP of comms, what's his name? Uh, Elliot Schrag is leaving. Right. And he blamed himself. For hiring the <laughs> PR firm Definers. It, I'm sure, basically, uh, Zuckerberg walked into an office and said, here's a pen, here's a sword. You're going you're gonna to write this out, and then you're going <laughs> to fall on this sword, and then you're going to get the hell out. Yes, and then you can fall all the way to the bank, because I'm sure he's taking quite a bit of money with him. Yes, that golden parachute, I'm sure, followed him around wherever he goes now. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. Alexa can now make Skype calls, which is kind of cool. You'll be able to make Skype calls on all your Alexa devices. The entire line will be able to do it now. Uh, In addition to using your Skype contacts via Alexa, users will be able to call mobile numbers and landlines using Skype out. And they're giving you 100 free minutes of calls for the first two months when you link your Skype account with Alexa, which is kind of nice. Yeah, except Skype sucks. It is a terrible thing. (laughs) Terrible, terrible thing. And I don't think I'll be syncing my Skype contacts with Alexa For the same reason, I'm not going to do my, you know, my contacts with Alexa Mm. and especially my Skype contacts, because I have a lot of pretty heavy hitters in my Skype contacts for all the interviews we do. And that would not be good for me to be calling some of these people in the middle of the night. It's like, oh, my Alexa just butt dialed Russell Brand. Okay, great. That's (laughs) what we need. Um, Yes. Yeah. I'll be passing on that one. This next one is pretty cool, though. Last month, somebody got a picture of a guy wearing an Apple Mac backpack with LiDAR in it and like cameras on it. It's a cool looking Mm -hmm. backpack. And since then, Apple has come out saying, oh, yeah, we're going to be mapping people walking so we can give better walking directions. And they're they're starting out here in California Mm -hmm. and the counties of Alameda, Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Mateo, Santa Cruz and Santa Clara are going to start having people walking around. Nobody walks in L.A. (laughs) Yeah. Except me. Except me. (laughs) But the thing about this is they're rebuilding all of their data from the ground up. They're they're not you because remember they used like open maps in the beginning and they they have Mm -hmm. cars out there and they're trying to backfill that. But so I think they're just trying to get rid of all of the old data they have and they're just going to start, you know, rebuilding it from scratch, which is a good thing. Because Apple Maps in the past has been known to suck balls, I think is (laughs) the technical term for it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I can't, they can't even come close to Google. And this comes back to this next story comes back to something that I talked about I think it was last week or the week before about how these self-driving car manufacturers aren't sharing data on, you know, on their findings because it's a business and there's competition. And the world would be a better place if everybody just pooled their knowledge and came up with, you know, a great solution for self-driving cars. Like everybody puts in money in the pool and they have this open software initiative to do that. I thought right. that would be fantastic. Never going to mm-hmm. happen. Never, never in this this universe. Well, <laughs> there is, <laughs> this is great. Over in the UK, there's a data group called the Open Data Institute. And right. they said that data monopolies are stifling innovation in the UK. Mm-hmm. Tech companies like Google and Apple and Uber should be forced to share mapping data with rivals and firms in the public sector. That's what they said. Do you okay. think it's ever going to happen? Probably nope. not. But <laughs> it's good that people are out there thinking about this stuff because, you know, it, it's it, their maps. It would be great if everybody could just share their map data. Then we wouldn't have think about how fewer cars there would be on the road and how fewer jobs there would be, I guess. So maybe scratch that. <laughs> but those those mapping cars are going to be self-driving anyway soon. So that is true. 
yeah, I think Tesla should be the ones that really give it up because they've got they've got more cars on the road than anybody. That is true. Come on, Elon, do something nice for for once. Well, he's too busy boring holes under L.A. Yeah, yeah. He's also he also caused a little stir with his pot smoking on Joe Rogan. I didn't get to put this one in the show notes, but NASA has launched uh, basically uh, kind of an ethics probe into <laughs> into SpaceX and Boeing as well. Right. So it's basically a safety review. And they're going to be doing like hundreds and thousands of interviews of all the people there so they can get an entire view of the corporate culture and Mm -hmm. how they, you know, basically do safety. Let's do safety right. And because they have a strict no drug policy. And that's kind of a problem when the CEO is out there smoking (laughs) pot and NASA says, oh, we don't like the pot. And that that's basically prompted this and it's kind of interesting how this is going to play out i'm sure that it's going to be fine because you know these people are these people are you know rocket scientists for christ's sake yes granted they are in california they might like to smoke on the weed probably in the evenings but it's legal it is legal that's the problem but that doesn't mean nasa cares they (laughs) they couldn't give a shit if it's legal what they want is a rocket ship that's not going to kill anybody yeah which is understandable yeah so back back to the the news. Mm-hmm. Snap is going to, I, I I can't I can't make this shit up. Snap is going to release new spectacles with two cameras for even more money than the original snaps. You know that's that's what they need to do to really fix the company. I I get it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, and they got dinged for forty million dollars in unsold inventory the last time they tried this because they ordered eight hundred thousand units and nobody wanted them. Yep. And nobody's going to want these either. No, these. this is a play to move into AR since mm-hmm. they'll have, you know, two lenses and they can do more stuff. Right. It's been kind of a rough week for the stock market. Uh, <sighs> my, my, my portfolio is not happy right now, but <laughs> I'm just going to turn it off and let it sit and come back to it later. And that's right. The one the one portfolio that I'm glad I don't have anymore is Bitcoin, because it is now <laughs> at a new 2018 low, dropping 25 percent in a week. And we thought it was bad last week. Oh, yeah. no. Everybody's everybody's selling off. You know, I deal with the socials for our podcast here, Jason. So I know you don't see these things a lot. But uh, we used to get a lot, a lot of comments and, 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 and likes and things like that of that nature from BitBros. Not so much likes, but people saying we were wrong. Yeah. They've all kind of gone away. You think? The, the BitBros aren't bug- bugging us much anymore because it turns out we kind of nailed it. Yep, kind of nailed it. And yeah, the problem is they can't afford their ISP bill now because they (laughs) they lost all their money on Bitcoin. Yes. Yeah. Everybody go check out Craigslist real soon for all those miners. You can get some some pretty good GPUs for cheap, I'm guessing soon. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Privacy.com. Privacy is the first payment product that keeps your personal information private while being even more convenient than using a regular credit card online. Privacy lets you generate a brand new Visa card number for every purchase you make online with one click with their browser extension or mobile app. We all buy stuff online more and more, and Privacy gives you a temp card number for every site you buy from. Never forget to cancel subscriptions or trials ever again. That alone is worth the price of admission, and oh yeah, the price of admission is free. They make their money the same way debit cards do, with interchange fees paid by merchants. And you know how skeptical we are of free services here on GOG, but these guys actually have a business model to back it up, which gives them the grumpy old geek's seal of approval. I actually reviewed this product when they first launched, and we're not just pimping the product because they paid us. I'm an actual customer and love what they're doing, and I still use them. And my big thing now is to curb my Amazon purchases so I don't go overboard after a couple cocktails. It's genius. If you use a password manager, and why don't you? If you listen to this show, you should use this. You don't use the same password everywhere, so why use the same credit card number? Cards are locked to a merchant, so you don't have to worry about changing your card everywhere if one gets hacked. Sign up takes less than two minutes, and like I said, it's completely free. So far, they saved their customers over $115 million in unwanted and unauthorized charges. You can freeze cards and set spending limits, and cards lock to merchants, making them useless to thieves and hackers. You can protect yourself from online fraud with all these virtual credit card numbers. It's genius. And they're disposable. You can delete cards anytime and kiss forgotten subscriptions goodbye. To sign up for free and get a $5 credit, just go to privacy.com slash GOG. That's $5 free to spend anywhere by just signing up. Privacy.com slash GOG. 
This is a no-brainer, so get on it now. Privacy.com slash GOG and get protected in this holiday shopping season. Media Candy. Well, here's something useful coming from your Prime membership. You can go see Aquaman a week early. Do I have to leave the house? Yes. Nah, never mind. Yeah, it's not actually streaming on Prime, but if you're a Prime member, you can uh, buy up to 10 tickets to see the film at 1,000 theaters around the country a full week ahead of everyone else, because you got to do something to get buzzed these days. Yeah, especially for Aquaman. Talk about, <laughs> out of all the movies they made, Aquaman is the one that I least care about. And, you know, because it's DC and they screw everything up, this will probably be the best one. Could be. Could be. Yeah, because yeah. God knows the rest of them weren't that great. Well, Wonder Woman was great until that last 30 minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I can't wait for yeah. the, the three-hour Aquaman underwater fight scene with the sharks and the fishies. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the KLF are still around. They're one of my favorite uh, bands of the old days. These guys are pretty crazy, Bill Drummond and Jim Cowdy. So they've reunited the band, but now they're calling themselves the Justified Ancients of Moo Moo. And they have plans for a new event. Now, I don't know if you remember, they once burned a million pounds on an island as an art project. Nope, don't uh, this, remember that. Yep, they did that uh, because they made a lot of money back in the day. And now they're doing something called the People's Pyramid, which is literally a pyramid out of dead people, or at least their ashes baked into bricks. They're going to use 34,592 bricks, each of which will contain 23 grams of ash of a dead person. And they're going to call it the Toxteth Day of the Dead. Okay. Because why not? Why not? Apparently, they still have some of their money. <laughs> they do. They still have a lot of money, and they just like to do crazy things. So they have a website for it. You can check that out. Link in the show notes, and they're going to call the process Moomoofication. Oh, God. <laughs> Look, man, I like it when people with crazy money do stupid, crazy things. Why not? <laughs> it's like the Elon Musk of the music world. <laughs> yeah, spread that wealth around. Better than burning it, I guess. That's, yeah, I guess so. I mean, this is an interesting little project. Anyways, uh, I watched a documentary on gary newman this week called android in la la land and it says the uh the discussion here says filmed with candor warmth and humor android in la la land explores life for gary and his numanoid family as they set up home in california and he recorded the album splinter which came out a couple of years ago which is great uh so i think this has been around for a while but i finally got around to seeing it it's quite funny actually i had no idea that gary newman was quite so funny um, sometimes unintentionally but uh generally very good <laughs> if you're a newman fan at all i think this is worth watching it's definitely interesting <laughs> i'll check it out but the problem with the link that you sent is i need a library card and i don't have a library card yet so i have to go oh, right go that's the the that. link i put on is on canopy but i think it's available other places as well i'll have to dig into that a little bit all right and taylor swift actually just did something extremely good for all music artists or at least ones on uh, umg Anyways, she left her longtime label, Big Machine Records, and signed with Universal Music Group's Republic Records. My wife works for Universal, so this is good news for us. Uh, one of her major contract stipulations is that if UMG sells its Spotify shares, the label will have to pass on some of that money to all the artists it represents, and it won't count against their advances. That's pretty cool thing that she did for, for everybody else on the label, so good on her. Define some. That's well, the trick. That's where it gets interesting, <laughs> and I don't yeah. think we have exact numbers there, so uh, I'm sure that the lawyers are getting into it. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. My wife, so we'll see. Oh, yeah, and the other interesting thing about this deal is the, the main reason she's leaving her old label is because mm -hmm. she doesn't own her masters. Yep. And part of this deal with UMG is going forward, she's going to own all of her masters. They had to basically give her an island full of cash. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. <laughs> I can't. I cannot believe that deal. It's, 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 insane. it's an insane deal for Taylor. I mean, a, a massive like windfall, like you cannot get anything better. But then again, she's one of the few artists that sell these days. So True. at least in the kind of numbers that make anybody any money. So it's a smart deal all around. Definitely. Yep. And uh, we talked a little bit about the new Star Trek shows that are coming. CBS All Access is just bringing Star Trek after Star Trek after Star Trek. And I think I mentioned in passing the animated comedy Lower Decks um, when we were talking about the new show that's going to star... Uh, what's the name of that actress again? Michelle Yao? Yep, Michelle. So, yeah, so uh, I just wanted to follow up on that and talk a little bit about it. Star Trek Lower Decks is going to be a half-hour animated comedy developed by Mike McMahon, who is a writer for the Rick and Morty show, and uh, see the upcoming Star Trek short called The Escape Artist, which I didn't even know existed either. So we're getting an awful lot of Star Trek. I'm yep. not so sure about this show. 
Uh, they've ordered two seasons. It will focus on the support crew of the Starfleet's less important ships. Uh, let's see. It says, uh, I wanted to do a show about people who put the yellow cartridge in the food replicator so a banana can come out the other end. This cat's <laughs> name is Riker. His son's name is Sagan. The man is committed. <laughs> He's brilliant, funny, and knows every inch of every Trek episode, and that's his secret sauce. He writes with a pure, joyful heart and of, of a true fan. We'll see. Yep. I'll give it a go. Uh, Star Trek comedy? All right. Why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? Shot. It has a chance. It has a chance. <laughs> Uh, I finished watching Patriot season two. Okay. That was, I loved Patriot. Patriot was a great right. show. If you listen to okay. any episode of a podcast about a year and a half ago, Merlin man would not shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> this is the greatest thing ever. I'm like, yeah, it was good. I wouldn't go that far, but I have to say Patriot season two better than the first. It was, it right. was quite enjoyable. Very strange, but quite enjoyable with a great payoff at the end. It, it's Excellent. worth watching it just for the, just for the last, like half of the last episode. It was awesome. Really enjoyed okay. it. I'm also really enjoying Narcos Mexico. Or Mexico. Okay. It's Mexico. got yeah, it's kind of the it's got the same vibe as all the other narcos. And if you dug those, you'll dig this one too. It's it's you know, it's a different story. It's about pot smuggling in Mexico around the same time as like right before cocaine started to come in. And uh it's a it's a really good show so far. I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Excellent. We covered Pod Save America on this episode yep. or in the show before. And we're going to cover it on this episode, too. I was a premonition there. <laughs> this came out. I just saw this this morning. Tim Miller, one of the, the guys on the show, he was the token Republican on, mm -hmm. on Pod Save America. Well, turns out he was the guy <laughs> behind the George Soros crap that came out of Facebook. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> he's on vacation right now. <laughs> until they can figure out what went wrong and if he'll be back or not. I kind of doubt it. I'm pretty sure he's uh, he's off the pod. Yeah, I think he's gone now. Yeah, that's kind of a... Yeah, that's a stick your dick in the blender moment right there. <laughs> At the library. I read a couple books this week. Mm -hmm. We're going to start off with Live, Work, 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 Die, A Journey into right. the Savage Heart of Silicon Valley by Corey Pine. The book started out okay. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. this is cool. He's guys moving to Silicon Valley. He's going to try and become a billionaire, come up with an idea. Live, he lived in some Airbnbs, hung out with coders, did you know pitches on Sand Hill Road and all that crap. <laughs> and then in the middle of it, it just started going weird. He started talking about Singularity University and doing like deep dives on them, doing deep dives on, you know, kind of the the the, the racist side of Silicon Valley and right. all these other like side roads. And it, it was like four books in one. So <laughs> I was kind of hoping the first part of the book was going to go to go to term or term sheet even. And it didn't. It was kind of just a weird book. I can't say that I would recommended a lot of his stuff that he was writing in there is spot on with us i mean i can see why it was recommended because a lot of the things he talks about are things we talk about every week about how right. just fucked up silicon valley is but he just didn't he just didn't bring it home so it was i give it a c i give it a c okay. yeah <laughs> i mean it had it really had potential and i like the guy but it was just it had too many tangents that turned into right. full-blown stories that just kind of it was really weird, but his singularity university story was good as a standalone story. That was, I think the best of the book because he really took the piss out of Ray Kurzweil. I mean, <laughs> really did. Next up, I read red war, a Mitch rap novel book 17 by Vince Flynn and Kyle Mills. Now here's the issue I have with this book. Now I've covered, <laughs> I've covered all, I've read all of these books. I've only covered a couple recently because I still like them. Um, mm -hmm. Vince Flynn is dead. Vince Flynn <laughs> died years ago. How's he still writing? Th that's the thing. See, I was at the grocery store today and I saw another novel, another Mitch Rapp novel, Vince Flynn. And I've, I love these novels, but the whole thing is Kyle Mills is the guy that writes him now and he gets his name in like 10 point type at the bottom. Right. So since they've been taken over by Kyle Mills, they've been okay. So if you're a Mitch Rapp fan, you're probably going to read it anyway. But if you're not, you can stop at... You know, after Vince Flynn died, I, I recommend all the books up until that point. But when Vince Flynn goes, you can stop. But uh, he's trying to carry the torch and make some money, which I, you know, he's doing a decent job. <laughs> but yeah, 
not really. I'm I'm done, I think, with the Mitch Rapp novel. So no more reviews for Mitch Rapp on Grumpy Old Geeks. And everybody cheered. <laughs> <laughs> well, I finally finished the Labyrinth Index, which is Laundry Files Book Nine by Charles Strauss. Um it was good. I, I had a really hard time getting into it at first because as we mentioned when you read it, uh, different characters, it's not a Bob story, sadly. Um and to to my mind, it's gotten too big. The stakes are too high. Uh, I liked it when they were smaller stories because there was more room for him to uh, put the humor in. And I felt that yeah. this was almost all plot and all story and moving it forward. And the little the little bits of humor and irony and laugh out loud stuff is kind of missing for, from it now because he's got so much st- story that he has to get across. Yeah. Step it back a little bit for the next one. Make it a smaller story. <laughs> yeah, I think going going back to the roots might be good or finish it. Just or br- just finish it, bring it yeah, home. because he's taken it to a point where it, he can't do small stories anymore because I'm not going to do spoilers here, but it's it's all pretty serious. It's taken he's taken it as far as it can go. We are at the point that they were all worried about the earlier books. And we're there. So he's got to either finish it or move on to something else at this point. Yeah, because I'm getting I'm kind of done if he doesn't if, yeah, on I, the next one. He's got one more for me unless he really knocks it out of the park. Yep, but. I agree. So I still enjoyed it. It's still good. It's just I miss I miss the humor that was such a big part of it. I miss Bob. I miss yeah, Bob. Sam Bob. <laughs> yeah. Something I also miss in my life is Firefly. I love that yeah. show so damn much. Mm-hmm. Let me guess. You never watched it. I did watch it. I oh, enjoyed it. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I finally went back and saw it at some point, I think a couple of years back. Okay. Did you did you see the movie Serenity as well? I did. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. And uh Serenity made me cry, but the thing about it is that it's never coming back. They can't get everybody back together. And some of the characters are, or actors who played the characters are actually dead now. So there's a bummer. Although I think That's the characters that are dead were killed off in Serenity. But here's what I'm here's what I'm liking about this. There's a new book series coming out. And the first book is Big Damn Hero. And it's based on the Firefly universe. And right. it is being overseen by Joss Whedon. So okay. right there, I'm happy. But it's the crew. <laughs> it's the same crew. So I'll be able to see him in my head and laugh along which is good because then wash is back you know since i I miss him the most you know it's going to be i think this will hopefully be a good series so keep an eye out for it they're coming pretty soon the link will be in the show notes for uh the story at gog.show slash 300 moron of the week my moron of the week is somebody i've always said was a moron just (laughs) this week he got to be more moronic bill maher Bill yes. Maher stepped on his dick this week, big time, with a blog post called Adulting. Mm-hmm. And he just rails into comic book culture and Stan Lee in particular and says that, uh, oh, God, he says uh, Stan's loyal fans pretended comic books were actually sophisticated literature and said Trump could only get elected in a country that thinks comic books are important. Well, <laughs> Well, that kind of that was you poke the bear on that one. Love that. Yes. And uh, everybody told him he was an idiot for this one. And uh, Stan Lee's company, POW Entertainment, responded to Mars blog about the late great Marvel honcho saying Bill's opinion that Stan merely inspired people to watch a movie is, in our opinion, frankly, disgusting. They added countless people can attest to how Stan inspired them to read, taught them that the world is not made up of absolutes, that heroes can have flaws and even villains can show humanity within their souls. We will rely on another of Stan's lessons to remind you that you have a powerful platform. So please remember, with great power, there must also come great responsibility. Great reply, I thought. Yeah, exactly. Well done. Very well done. Look, but everybody's allowed to have their opinion. Bill Maher is obviously he's never cared for comic book culture or superheroes or anything like that. He's made that very clear. Making a statement like that so so soon after Stan Lee's death was dumb, but uh, well done to Stan's team, because that is exactly how you should respond. Yep, like a boss. Like a boss. Yep. Now, next moron of the week, Japan Airlines. Mm-hmm. I, I saw this article, and I just I did a double take when I, when I first saw it, because it comes from the BBC, and the headline is, Japan Airlines tightens alcohol rules for pilot. And I'm like, Okay, they shouldn't sh- they be pretty tight? They should. Pretty? Yeah, I, I, they <laughs> should not be able. They should not be loose enough where you should be able to tighten them anymore. <laughs> yes, it's not like a belt. No. Yeah. So Japan Airlines is going to introduce a new breathalyzer system at airports abroad after one of its pilots was arrested at Heathrow Airport for being drunk. 
Oh, God. Not just drunk. Nine times over the legal alcohol limit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> my God. And the guy faked it with the breathalyzer. He, like, stood back and, like, blew from a distance and he got through. Uh, but, yeah, this is uh, this comes after a series of Japan airline, airline flights were delayed due to intoxicated pilots. Because Japanese oh law does not set limits for alcohol consumption by pilots. Instead, it's up to airlines to determine alcohol limits for pilots on duty. Okay, well, Japan, I see I see a market opportunity for a new law because right now I will never be stepping foot on Japan Airlines. Uh, me either, actually. That, that's insane. All right, well, let's get some legislation going there. Come yeah, on, sure. fix this problem. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, I, I really, uh, <laughs> you can't make this shit up. It's... <sighs> <laughs> we say that every week, man. It's great. You, you can't make this up. Ivanka Trump. After an entire campaign of but her emails, Ivanka Trump has been using her private email to conduct official White House business. And you despite the entire existence (laughs) of the year 2016, she's using personal email to do White House business. Yes, but her emails, I can't fucking believe we live in this world right now yeah and especially since trump is still like rattling the saber about wanting to go after clinton for her email yep well go look at your daughter she sent hundreds of emails from her personal account to white house aides and cabinet officials over the course of the year the washington post reports that less than 100 of those emails contain discussion of government policies and official white house business which i believe is about the same ratio that that they had with clinton (sighs) <sighs> but her emails is still and that, that that is the thing that kills me is it's it's they're still going after clinton and oh my god i, I just don't know what world we're living in anymore yeah it's email people yeah it's it's <laughs> not hard use use the use the company outlook that's all you got to do. yes it's not that's hard. all you got to do <laughs> okay i this one came across my desk this morning i wasn't going to put it in but it, it it irks me so much that i really <laughs> have to put it in here amazon mm-hmm. sent me an email this yes. morning about amazon day did you get this? Yes, I did. I was very upset about this as well. They say, simply pick a day that works for you and we'll deliver your Amazon orders each week on the same day. Free for eligible Prime members. Nice try, fuck sticks. I pay for Prime so I can get my stuff faster. Not because I want to batch my deliveries. They're just trying to make it sound like this is such a fantastic idea, but all they're doing is trying to cut down on more shipping costs. I, we, yeah. we see through this, Jeff. We see through this one. <laughs> Yeah, this is a load of crap because uh, uh, that's why I'm already a Prime member. It's for my free and quick shipping, not so that I can now wait until Thursday or whatever day I pick. What a load of crap. Yeah. I mean, this this should be free for everyone because why do you have mm-hmm. to? Because it's good for you as a company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is, you know, just adding a price on Since you're a Prime member, we're just going to make this, you know, free for you. Give me a fucking <laughs> break, guys. Nice try. Feedback loop. We got some new Patreon subscribers, Kevin, Paul, and David. And David writes in, interesting new concept with your genetic data. This is a startup that's offering to sequence your genome free of charge, then let you profit from it. Right. Nebula Genomics, created by the prominent Harvard geneticist geneticist George Church and his lab colleagues, seeks to upend the usual way genomic information is owned. They're doing, I guess, a much deeper scan, if you want. They're doing a full genome. Yeah, full genome. Yeah, they're doing the whole thing. And uh, it's a little unsure exactly how you'd make money, but you would technically own your own data. They wouldn't own it. And uh, I guess you're licensing them to it. I'm not entirely sure how this is exactly going to work, but I would trust this over 23andMe. It seems like they're going to be basically genetic brokers. So somebody can come to them and say, hey, we need this yeah. this group of people, you know, this cohort for this study. And do you have these people? And then they'll send off an email to the people who they have in that cohort that can say, yes, send, opt me in and tell me how or first tell me how much I'm getting paid, then opt me in. And then yeah. you can make some money off of it that way. It's an interesting way to do it. I mm-hmm. don't know if I would, but, you know, because <laughs> what, what do I get out of it besides a few bucks, you know? Yeah, nothing really. So, and quantum, there you go. yeah, and quantum leap writes in. Didn't have time to read the end of trust yet, but it will probably be a good read. The subtitle states something went wrong. Sound familiar? And this is a <laughs> new set of short stories from the EFF called yeah. the end of trust. You can download it for free in a PDF form, or you can buy the hardcover if you are so inclined. Yes, that's very cool. 
Uh, we also got some donations over at PayPal. Alberto writes this. Hi, Brian and Jason. Merry November 21st. GOG is super. I hope you'll continue to be grumpy and geeky even when you win your first podcast Grammy. Take my money now. Thank we you. will. We did. Thank you. <laughs> yes, and Steve is sending a recurring payment, so thank you so much for that. Preach. Preach. I can't believe I just said preach. Uh, again. <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> Over on Twitter, right film sleep repeat writes in a new low. Who thought it was possible for Bitcoin? Scumbags cram make a wish website with coin mining software. Yep. I think at this point the wish has to be, oh, God, I wish this was worth money again. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> uh, and Wesley writes us, seen this yet? One dot one dot one dot one. Faster internet by cloud flare. Free, private by design, and paid for by websites using one dot one dot one dot one. Not a catchy name. The default app along the likes of 1Password and privacy that no one should be without. And I'm gathering you check this out, Jason. Yeah, it's basically a DNS server. And, you know, <laughs> by Cloudflare, who knows what they're doing. And it is fast as hell. I, I set it up Ooh. this morning on, on my Mac here. So I used to use OpenDNS, but this thing is super fast. I mean, it was like, wow. And it's, it, you know, privacy. I trust Cloudflare. I use them all the time. Right. I use them everywhere. Mm -hmm. So this is cool. This is very cool. Thanks for the heads up, Wesley. Yes, thank you. TJ writes in, more on of the week candidate. Justice Minister Rory Stewart has apologized after making up a Brexit stat on live radio. And uh, <sighs> from the BBC, yeah. yeah. And then he says, how the hell are we meant to trust these politicians when they are inventing stats out of thin air? Now, what was funny about this is I was going to put a note in here that said, you know, 80% of statistics are made up on the fly. And then I went and I read the quote that he said. It's like 80% of the population is with us on Brexit. I'm like, see? Damn. See, 80%. 80%. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike writes in, I may have solved the crapple watch thing. Get a fitness tracker. I got an unbranded one for $35 a few days ago that does anything I do with an Apple leash. I also traded in my iPhone for a Samsucker S9 instead of driving 70 miles to get the something broke issue fixed. All right. Uh, just not doing fitness tracking right now. I'm taking a break. Yep. Taking a break. <laughs> I'm still doing it with my watch because I'm okay with it. Yeah. I mean, if I was going to do one, I'd just go get another Fitbit, but because that seemed to work the best out of everything. Mm -hmm. Manu writes in, please do some background research before recommending anything from Yoan Hari or Sam Harris. Well, you need to be a little more explicit on your comment here because both people have a lot of haters. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming you're one of them, but uh, please be specific. Okay. There you go. Tired Mixer writes us, I'm a millennial, and I love that you rag on millennials. We whack generally. But don't forget, please don't forget about our wonky-ass baby boomer parents, the helicopter and bulldozer parents. That's how you raise us, I mean. Yeah, okay, fair enough. All righty. Over at GOG.show, <laughs> Mike writes in, Boeing and Spark Cognition Joint Venture. SkyGrid. SkyGrid will build AI and blockchain-powered airspace management software platform. Let's see. Got the buzzwords, both AI and blockchain. Real close in the dystopian name department, too. SkyGrid is real close to Skynet. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up on that. Link will, link yeah, will be in the great. show notes for that. Uh, Benjamin writes us, damn, you guys are grumpy. Episode 290 answering my question about VPN and you shred me because it's all over the site. I get that now, but up to the point, I'd only listened via my phone podcast app and had never visited the site. So what? So what meat delivery service do you guys recommend? <laughs> uh, none at the moment, I don't think. Uh, nobody's paying <laughs> us right now, but uh, come on. You got to admit it was funny, Ben. It was funny. Yeah. <laughs> and Booby writes in, hi, Brian. Wish all is well. What, are, what is your thoughts about mobiles and children? My 10-year-old is bugging me, and I told her to forget it, at least till she's in high school and will actually be spending time after school with her friends, hence the need to keep in touch. Anyway, I told her that when she'll have a phone, I will be able to see everything she does and know where she'll be all the time, like God. She was not impressed. Cheerio from Italy. Well, sounds like you solved your problem there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, my kid's only two, so this, is, this isn't this is something I'm even thinking about yet. And given the way things change by by the time he's going to be wanting or interested in a phone, who, know, who knows what things are going to be like then. But uh, offhand, I mean, I, you got to go with your own gut feeling. But uh, th don't forget the peer pressure element to all of this. Uh, if, if your kid is the only kid that doesn't have a phone, that's going to be kind of weird. There's all kinds of monitoring that you can do. There's all kinds of different things that you can do to, to ensure that nothing crazy is going on. But uh, it sounds like it sounds like you're handling it pretty well right now. So well done. Uh, Pock writes, I think that's Paul with a typo. Uh, OBS Studio. Hi, I'm sure your fellow podca podcasters are using the software. Noah, who does the Ask Noah show and Chris from Jupiter Broadcasting. I'm sure that they would help. Well, we uh, we ended up booting doing the, the live video at the moment because uh, we ran out of time. But uh 
we will get to it eventually. Yeah, yep. Um, I did check out OBS Studio, but I haven't had a chance to fire it up yet because I've been dealing with getting the rest of the studio wired up and <laughs> waiting on cables to get the video to the you know the computer. My black magic box took a dump, so I can't even pull that in yet, and I'm not going to do a webcam from my iMac because <laughs> that's just gross. Yeah. But uh, thanks for the heads up. Yep, yeah, going to check it out. Christopher writes in, AI and Microsoft Word? And there's a new article from Microsoft that says, collaborate with others and keep track of to-dos with the new AI features in Word. He goes on to say, apparently adding and highlighting... The paperclip is self-aware! The paperclip is self-aware! Oh, Clippy's back, and he's here to kill you. Uh, He said, apparently adding and highlighting a to-do tag is now considered AI. Oh, God. (laughs) Yep, yep, yep. Jim writes in, hey, GOG, I know you guys speak highly of the Opera browsers. Do you not have any concerns the company is owned by the Chinese? (laughs) They're actually not owned by the Chinese. They're owned by a Chinese company. Yeah. Uh, Opera, Opera software co-founder and former CEOs have publicly expressed privacy concerns and have since gone on to create another browser, Vivaldi. Yeah, you know, we we knew that. Um, we are concerned about it. We tried Vivaldi. Uh, I, I didn't like it at first. Maybe it's better now. I don't know. Yeah, they came out with a, a 2.0 version recently that I'm going to check out because the one thing that Vivaldi didn't have when we tried it because it was, you know, maybe six or eight months ago. Uh, they didn't mm-hmm. have any way to sync everything across devices, yeah, which is a that's big for me. That's a yeah, that's a that's a showstopper right there. But in September, they launched Vivaldi Sync, so now it's worth trying again because if it does everything that Opera does, then I, I'm fine. If as long as I can install install my extensions and go from there, that's fine. The um, mm-hmm. the built in ad blocker is really nice too on Opera, so hopefully they've got that yeah. figured out as well. <laughs> but I, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to give it another try. The privacy thing, you know, I went to Firefox mm. because of that and tried that out, and that was just an unmitigated clusterfuck, and <laughs> lasted a week. Man, they don't know how to make software at Firefox or Mozilla. Not anymore. Mozilla, sorry. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. So Mike writes in, I'm a couple weeks behind, but concerning your can of air sci-fi request for help, see attached link, a pail of air. I believe it was famous. I remember hearing a replay of the radio show, and this is an old story from the 50s. Did you check it out? I did. Uh, not what I was thinking of, but I've given up on that. So thank you for everybody that's written in. I don't think I'll ever figure out what the, what the hell my, my brain was trying to think of there. Okay. <laughs> Uh, David writes in with a link from CNET. Google Inbox is going away. I, for one, am quite sad about this. It's been neglected for a while with long-term issues not being fixed. That said, I've found it to be the best tool for my email for a long time. It was okay. Yeah, still, it, it was okay. Yeah. There were too many things that were missing in it that I thought. I mean, there were some new things that I liked, but uh, if you're on a Mac, check out Airmail 3. It's great. And you don't even have to fire yes. up a browser for it. I love it. <laughs> John writes in, hi, still loving the show, guys. You put me on the Hacking Humans podcast, which is first rate. I work for a car rental company, and we're looking at expanding to scooters. Oh, sorry for you. Mm-hmm. Your reports from the U.S. are great info for us to try and get it right in Europe. P.S. I can't see your link in the how to organize your fridge in the site notes from the coordinated behavior episode. Can you help? Yes, I can help. Uh, go to gog.show slash 297, and it's under bric a Or you can search for organize, but I think there's a an issue here, spelling issue, because you spell organize with an S and uh, over here we spell it with a Z. So if you spell, search for organize with a Z, it'll be the top result and just search, go down to bric a brac In one case, our search worked. <laughs> <laughs> it actually worked. And you also uh, manhandled a U into behavior as you Europeans are wont to do. Yes. So uh, Mike writes in, Vice says we should be paranoid, shaking my damn head. And uh, yeah, it's it's the recirculated story about uh, Facebook listening to us on our phones from the one idiot writer over at Vice that did a test of one and uh, got nowhere with it. Uh, I, this is the problem with social media is these stories never go away because of ad clicks. Yeah. They just keep coming around, keep coming around, keep coming around. Coming, coming back, around. coming back, coming back. Yeah. Yep. Kevin writes in, hi, guys, love the show. Thought you might be interested in what happens to people using electric scooters here in the UK. You can even get points on your future license. And uh, it's an article about how a 15-year-old was caught speeding, and they they put points on his license. So as soon as he gets his license, he's already going to get dinged. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's well done. That That's smart. That makes a lot of sense. So good on you, UK. Yeah, and over here, I you're supposed right to be soon. 18 to write one. Yeah, that's true. Uh, not that anybody is. <sighs> Don't get me started again. Ivor <laughs> writes in, hey guys, I thought you and your listeners might be interested in this podcast, The Darknet Diaries. Their latest episode is on how the IRS is getting hijacked and was probably one of the most frightening podcasts I've heard in a long time, and I don't even live in the USA. 
I thought this might be something you and Papa Dave might want to talk about sometime, as I'm sure you will have a lot of people who could be affected by this scam. Cheers. I'll have to give that a listen. Um, I'm trying to stay away from my sadness security porn, but <laughs> yeah, here we go. I'll definitely check it out. <laughs> Uh, he also sent in a link. Uh, I think Brian came up with a very good point a while ago that driverless cars would rapidly become the shit pits of society once they were on the road. Well, now we're really going to have to watch where we sit if this article turns out to be right. And uh, I think this is actually one of the, st- the links I used way back in the day, but uh, who knows? So, um, yeah, it's basically uh, according to a study conducted on the impact of autonomous vehicles on urban tourism, autonomous vehicles with no driver inside would be the perfect alternatives to shady motels where sex workers like to operate. Would you like a prostitute with your car? Yeah. Uber prostitution. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would yeah. like a happy ending at the end of my route. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, yes, I will not be getting into that. Car. Kevin writes in, was listening to the latest one mentioning RT. And here's a wonderful video series you may too, you too may be interested in. Operation Infection with a K. So it's uh, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll check this one out. It's about uh, Russia meddling, disinformation, fake news, elections, all that good stuff. Anyway, keep up the great work. We shall try. Thanks for the link. Yep, and David sent in a couple things here. First, is it just me, or is the airmail turned into a steaming clusterfuck of shit? I know you guys use it. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> used of the devil. i for a while with my <laughs> Gmail account. Yeah, so apparently he's having lots of problems with it. I don't use it, so. Okay, he says, I want to like airmail, but it seems to have gone to crap, or is it just me? Are there any better alternatives to keep me from going back to the web inbox.google.com? Um, the thing about airmail and going to shit, I know exactly what the problem is. It's Mojave. Their upgrade to airmail to use it in dark mode in Mojave mm-hmm. broke a lot of the the buttons on it. So when you try and like, you know, archive something or delete something, you have to like click around to find the the spots where it actually works now. And it right. sucks. That part sucks. <laughs> so uh fortunately I do most of my email on High Sierra. So <laughs> uh I, I I skipped that problem. But yeah, on my on my laptop where I have Mojave running except for the laptop died. Uh, it was a major pain in the ass. So hopefully they're going to fix that. I, I've been bitching at them on Twitter. I highly recommend you do the same. <laughs> That'll be good. Yeah. And David also writes in, boys, we're on a roll. AI toilets will scan your poop to diagnose your ailments. This has been like driverless cars. This has been coming <laughs> for years. And I'm sure it ain't there yet. I'm not even going to open this link, though, because it's CNET. And uh-huh. they're... Auto playing videos. Goddamn auto playing videos. But yeah, this has been around for a while and keeps making the rounds. We'll see if it ever comes to a poopition. Yes. And iTunes, we got a five star rating from Strez Technoid. Says my meager payment would have rated the show at six stars as I had to leave a snarky remark and comment. Consider a five score of six and a meat space score of five. Guess I will just have to go to the website. What is the address again? Uh. <laughs> if you want your question or comment read on the show, head over to GOG.show slash support and send us your feedback or questions that we can read on the air. And if you're so inclined, please head over to GOG.show slash iTunes and toss us a five star and snarky review. And as always, please tell your friends. Closing shout outs. This show will be coming out on Thanksgiving. So happy American Thanksgiving, everyone. And thank you so much for listening. And uh, we'll see you uh, sometime next week after we take our little break. Yep. And I do want to mention that for this show, I had a massive amount of links that just didn't quite make it in the show. So in the show notes for this show at GOG.show slash 300, I'm adding a new bonus link section, which I may keep up going forward because I always have extras that are never going to get in the show. And it's always some cool stuff. But, you know, we have to pick the pick the, the best of the best to go in the show or the worst or the worst. Yeah, depending on <laughs> depending on what we what sections we've got this show. So check that out, and I hope everybody's having a great American Tea Day. Until next time, I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schellmeister. Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. To support the show and keep us on the air, go to patreon.com slash GOG. Toss us a buck a month, and we'll love you forever. If you'd like to give a one-time or recurring donation, go to GOG.show and click the PayPal button in the sidebar. Show notes for this episode are at GOG.show slash 300. From there, you can find links to old episodes, leave feedback, ask questions, and get links to stuff we like. Stay grumpy. Spartans! Ready your breakfast and eat hearty. But tonight, we dine in hell!